Yo, this is Man Kevo. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, we got a crazy topic about credit with Darian Delavante, man. What's going on, man? Well, first of all, thank you, King. Thank you very much yes, for, uh, you know, gracing me with being here. Um, this episode is going to be crazy. It's going to be one of the craziest episodes on consumer law and credit. So y'all better stay tuned to the whole episode. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Darian Delavante. I'm your favorite consumer law expert. I teach people how to repair, rebuild, restore their own credit using consumer laws. I also teach credit repair business owners how to scale their credit repair business to making an extra 100 to 200,000 per year using four key principles, lead generation, client conversion, client ascension, and continuity. Those four principles can scale any business. Thank you for having me. So look, I wanna ask you, so a lot of my fans, you know, they probably, you know, out of, out of high school, mm -hmm. just getting into college, you know, low funds some of them probably just got money um just sitting around and don't know what to do with the money and i always tell them that you know credit is very important you can build credit you can um actually do credit just like you teach people how to build credit base credit and you do it yourself or so i do it for me and i'm launching a program okay for affluent and high network individuals like yourself that don't got the time to do it where i will be doing it okay. so it's a program that i'm coming out with soon but for the most part right now, I teach consumers and credit repair business owners how to get anything deleted from a credit profile. Wow. Anything at all. You name it, I've gotten it deleted. Wow. So, so basically, if somebody is worried right now with bad credit mm -hmm. and have stuff on their credit, you basically teach them how to take it off their credit. Correct. Using consumer laws. Okay. It's like, there's so much tactics now on the internet. People telling people how to do weird stuff that can get them into trouble Stop. or get um, fraud alert put on their credit reports and then they don't even know that it's there. We're using consumer laws, laws put in place to protect the consumer by Congress. It's a whole nother game. So for a person who's, who don't know too much about credit mm -hmm. that's watching this video, mm -hmm. what is consumer law? Consumer laws are laws put in place to protect consumers from banks, auto dealers, any type of lender, subprime lenders, different financial institutions, it's lost to protect you as the consumer. So, all right, let me give you an example. You heard about the $3.7 billion lawsuit with Wells Fargo and the CFPB? Yeah. That's consumer law, right? So it's laws put in place because Wells Fargo, they were opening illegal accounts, applying illegal late payments because late payments don't even exist. And a lot of people don't know this, but I'm gonna break this down to you, how late payments are, late, late payments don't exist. It don't wow. exist if you let it. Because when you go to the definition of your consumer report, FICO or its factors are not a part of it. So I, I'm a, I'm a, wow. I, guys, I'm gonna okay. break everything down. But consumer okay. law is the goal. Okay, consumer law, y'all, y'all heard it first. So I wanna know as far as, how do you feel about the credit cleaning letters? I make my own letters. My letters are consumer law based. I do not use anybody's letter. Right. And I am 100% effective. Right, right. That's why I got you on here, man. I was seeing you doing your thing, bro. And I was just like, man, I want to really dig it. So, man, just give us some free game. Just give us some game on, like, you know, about anything about credit cleaning, credit building. I just want to hear from you, you know? All right. So, the first thing that we got to comprehend, because we ain't understanding nothing, right? Yeah. We ain't under nobody's stand. And uh, we need to comprehend words. So, so there's a term that the elite and the affluent use and most business owners that a lot of people that are consumers don't know about. It's called double speaking. That was when you say one thing, but it means another. Exactly. Another example would be legalese. Like if we're gonna do business and we got a contract, why do we need a lawyer? It's, it's written out in a different language that the, the, the regular person cannot comprehend. So therefore we need another person to interpret what is it. Well, why couldn't it just be in basic English where we both comprehend what we're doing and we can make an informed decision? Right, right. So the double speaking is real. All right, another example would be person. What do you think the word person means? Person? Yeah. Like, um, like yourself. What if I tell you with consumer law, person doesn't necessarily mean you, the natural person that's flesh and blood. It also means a corporation, a government entity, a trust, different financial institutions. Let me get the definition. I, I, I'm gonna I'm break something down to you. I'm gonna give you all something. Hey. A lot of people, when I speak, people think that I be joking, right? So 
for everybody that's watching right now, I'm gonna walk y'all through the whole, you talk about getting the whole FICO together, I'm gonna give y'all the whole game. So 15 USC, 1681. This is the Fair Credit Reporting Act, right? right? This is the law that governs how different businesses, institutions, corporations, and firms report your information to the consumer reporting agencies. That's the other thing too about double speaking. Credit bureaus, I'm sure you've heard that word a lot of times yeah. before. What if I told you credit bureaus don't even exist? And it's a whole lie and it was made up. Wow. I can prove it. Every, if I can prove what I'm saying out here, I want you to kick me off of this interview. Uh, yeah. Live, kick me off of the interview if I can't prove what I'm saying. I'm right. that confident in what I'm about to tell everyone right now. So is credit important? Credit is, let me show you how important credit is. It's, it says that America is backed by full faith and credit of the United States. Credit runs the world. Right. Earlier, before, behind the scenes, we were talking about good debt and bad debt. Right. There is no money. America has no money. Real money is coin of silver and coin of gold. We've been off the gold standard since 1971 when Nixon took us off the gold standard. What we have now are Federal Reserve notes, are fiat currencies that we use to do our daily transactions. So the fact that there is no money, quote unquote, money is created through debt. That's why debt is tax free. That's why you'll have guys like Robert Grant and these mega guys that knows the tax laws, they don't pay any income tax. Because rule number one of the rich is the rich don't work for money. They have money work for them. Right. So they will borrow. Like, look at Elon. He will borrow to buy, then use his assets, then liquidating his assets to buy anything. Because when you do that, you get taxed. Right. Credit is one of the most important things that an individual needs to learn, especially for the high schooler that's watching this right now for the college graduate that's watching this right now, for someone that wants to go in business right now, you gotta learn credit because if you are not rich or come from money, credit is gonna be the gap to get you where you need to be. Exactly. Make all the sense of the world. Huh? So, so basically you saying that if they, if anybody right now sitting at home thinking about how do I make money? How do I get rich? How do I get my life to the next level? Most likely they need to start either fixing and building their credit over anything else. 100%, because for sure. you can do it for free. Right. Like, it is so much of a low entry to repair, rebuild, and restore your own credit. It's so easy that people make it difficult. And the reason why I say that is, okay, first of all, my YouTube channel, right, the Randall Levante. Dude, I have content that can hold you on there for a whole month straight, no cap. Wow. I got content up to four hours of me breaking down debt collection, breaking down the FCRA, breaking down different laws, and showing you how I built an 800 credit score three times in one year, and I wasn't even in the country. I was deployed in Kuwait. Wow. So make sure y'all follow his YouTube channel. That's crazy. It's a whole game out there. So let me, let me break something down. So I want people to comprehend what I'm saying, because of double speaking, we have group certain words and certain meaning together based on what we know. And it's no fault of yours. It's just that you weren't hip to the game, but I'm about to put y'all on game. So the first thing I want to talk about is the term consumer report, right? Yeah. A lot of people call it the credit report. They're two totally different things, All right? Right. The credit report is a snapshot that you get from a third party credit monitoring company like FICO, or, or any of these other companies that do credit monitoring. Right. When we talk about the consumer report itself, that's the report that Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax house. Right. That's your file that has all your information. And one of the definitions that Congress has is, and guys, you can look this up. Everything that I'm about to tell you, you can fact check what I'm about to say. Proven facts. Proven facts. So if you go to 15 USC 1681A, it brings you the definition rules and construct, right? And when you scroll down to number two, it says exclusions. Well, the first thing we need to comprehend is what does the word exclusion mean? If, if someone say you are excluded from this event, doesn't it simply mean that you are not allowed to be at this event? So if Congress is telling us that there are certain things excluded from your consumer report, well, wouldn't it be in your best interest as a consumer to find out what is not supposed to be there? 
All right. All right. So and that's what led to my curiosity. That's how I started this journey of consumer law. So when I started reading the laws, this is what Congress says. Except as provided in paragraph three, the term consumer report does not include. And Congress gave us a definition of what the consumer report is. Right. People think it's a credit report. It's not. Congress says this. The term consumer report means any written oral or other communication of any information regarded by a consumer reporting agency bearing on a consumer's credit worthiness, credit standing, credit capacity, character, general reputation, personal characteristics, or mode of living which is used or expected to be used in whole or in part for the purpose of serving as a factor for establishing a consumer's eligibility for a credit or insurance to be used primarily for personal, family, and household purposes, B, employment purposes, or C, any purpose under Section 1681B. At any time in this definition, did you hear me say the word FICO? Mm -hmm. But what do we think when we talk about credit? The FICO, FICO score. score yeah. And people believe that whatever FICO produces is what is there. Well, it's not true. FICO is a technology company. FICO is an algorithm that based a consumer on their risk level based on information on your consumer report. So if that is true and the consumer report exists independently without the FICO score, it simply means that the factors of FICO does not contribute to your consumer report. Exactly. So now, when I learned this, brother, I said this. Congress says, except as provided in paragraph three, the term consumer report does not include report containing information solely as to transactions or experiences. What is a payment history? Your transactions. Yeah. If your transactions are excluded. If your transactions are excluded, where does a late payment come from? Yeah. It does not exist. Right. It's a factor of FICO. Payment history, utilization, age of credit, mixture of credit, new credit. Those are factors of FICO. It has nothing to do with the consumer report. So when you see the separation now, all right. So if I know that my transactions are excluded, the reporting of a late payment is illegal. Yeah. That's how I crack the code, bro. So when I learned this, and then it goes further to speak about the experience. So it also says the transactions or experiences between the consumer. Remember earlier we spoke about what a person means? All right, so a consumer is an individual. This is a definition by law, right? But when we go to the word person, the term person means any individual, partnership, cooperation, trust, estate, cooperative, association, government, or governmental subdivision. Wow. So basically we, basically we are getting scammed by credit, basically, like the FICO companies or what? Like, I, I wouldn't say scam. I'd say that we are misinformed intentionally. Bad credit is the biggest business in the U.S. All right, I'm going to put you on to some game right now. Yo, y'all better They don't even supposed to put that on there. It's not supposed to be there. It's a factor of FICO. FICO isn't law. FICO isn't the government. It is a private company. It has nothing to do with your consumer report. The same way Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax, private companies, but they have assumed a role where they call themselves a credit bureau. Everybody thinks government when you hear the word bureau. So if I can control the narrative of what you hear, I can get you to do what I want. So if we use the word bureau and everybody believes we are a credit bureau, if you dispute something and I say it is validated, you will not contest it anymore. You're not. <laughs> That's wild as hell. That's hard. I, I'm going to take it a step further. The state of Florida, there's a law called usury law, right? Yeah. And each state has their own version of it. The state of Florida is capped at 18%. That's the maximum interest rate any institution can charge anyone. But I guarantee you right now there's people 
watching this interview that is paying in Florida right now more than 18% interest rate. That's a usury law violation, but people don't know these things exist. Each state has one. They have their own version of what that amount is. Now, how I found this out was, dude, when I got my first car, it was a used Nissan Altima, 2007, 75,000 miles. I was paying 18.90% interest rate on it. I couldn't even get approved. I had to get a co-signer. Damn. The payment was $550. I was a new driver. New insurance, that means I'm paying $400. I lived in New York, Bronx, New York. That insurance is hella high. So for $950, I was paying for a used Nissan Altima with 75,000 miles on it. Damn. Bad credit is the most expensive thing. It's the most expensive life you will ever live. So you can't wait. For y'all do know that with bad credit, you can't get anything. Mm -hmm. You can't get a credit card. You barely could get a banking account. But think about it too. If you even get it, subprime lenders. So now, remember when I had bad credit, like I told you with the car, I was paying 18%. Yeah. You with perfect credit or good credit, you're paying 2 or 3%. That's not a lot that you're making money off of. Right, right. You're making money off of me with the bad credit, 18%. 35%, 25%. Not to mention now, truth in lending. 15 USC 1605, the finance charge. See, what a lot of people don't know is that the finance charge has an insurance built into it. The insurance protects the creditor in case I default. So if I default on my loan or whatever I finance, an insurance policy is built into it right. that compensates the lender. So they just got full payment. But what else happens? You get charged a late fee because you're late, right? Right. Then after you got charged a late fee, they did a charge off, right? They got a tax break on it. Then they sold it to collections. Do you see how many times they sold this account? They got paid off the insurance. The insurance was built in. So if I defaulted, that insurance paid them. They charge it off now. Then they sold it to collections. Money getting made all the way around. Bad credit is one of the biggest businesses in America. And so, what, so this is another thing I want to talk about, too. So I run into a lot of people who have so-called good credit scores, right? Mm -hmm. They young. They be like, my credit score is 750. It's 800. But with no credit history. Can you tell them a little bit about the credit history game? All right. I'm glad you brought it up. The credit score means nothing. The profile is profile, everything. Yeah. Because, no, when we talk about a good mix, we're talking about the type of accounts, student loans, auto loans, personal loans. We're talking about no mortgages. mortgages. We're talking about the age. Is it yep. three plus years? Yes. We're talking about utilization. Is it below 10%? Is yep. it below 5%? No, we're, we're talking about your ability to pay back. Is your payment history stellar? When, when, we, when we really dive into credit, the profile is more important than anything else because a kid coming out of college, that is an authorized user on their mom or uncle or some relative credit card. Then we have a 750 with a thin profile. Yeah. I've seen people get denied with an 800 credit score. Yeah, me too. It's a thin profile. Yeah. There's nothing there. And they're arguing with them, like, wondering, like, why am I getting denied? Why is this happening? Why is that happening? Mm -hmm. And I'm telling them, like, bro, it's because you don't have no history. You have nothing. They, they got to they gotta understand, you have to separate yourself. You have a car credit history mm -hmm. you have credit card history mm -hmm. you have loan history mm -hmm. you like even with a mortgage like you all oh, you never had a mortgage before that's what they're going to ask you so they want to see like oh should we test them should we try them out that's a part of credit you know what i mean so it's just good to know like for people that is watching that you have to have history that's why it's always good to start early not procrastinating or mm -hmm. the best thing you can do is learn from people you hear how he give it his game you definitely want to sign up for his mentorships, his classes. Go look at his YouTube channel because I'm shocked. I, he's telling me stuff I didn't even know. You know what I mean? So, man, let's get, keep giving it. All right. What else we got for him? You brought up a point in mortgages. I didn't want to touch it, but I'm going to touch it. Do you know about the secondary market? Have you heard about the secondary market? I heard some about it. Let's go back to 2008 when the whole market crashed, right? Okay. When they were selling um, collateralized debt obligations, CDOs, and credit default swaps and repackaging mortgages and selling it to investors, right? Right. So there's a term called securitization where the mortgage gets separated 
from the note. So for everybody that's a homeowner, I'm about to give you all a game right yeah. now that there's very few people that notice the mortgage and the note cannot be separated. If the mortgage is separated from the note, there is no, there's no right to pay. What? All right, let me break it down. The mortgage is an accessory to the note. Right. The mortgage secures the debt. The promissory note is the promise to pay that debt. If they are separated, the mortgage is null and void. There's a lot of people that's paying on mortgages where the holder hold only the mortgage, but they don't own the promissory note. There's no legal right to collect. Damn. There's people right now that they're paying someone who holds the note. The note by itself is worthless without the mortgage. The mortgage is the debt. The note is the promise. They are accessories. They must travel together. And yeah. a lot of people that got pushed out of their homes illegally due to foreclosure, the persons that were foreclosing didn't hold the note and the mortgage. You cannot foreclose if you don't own the note and the mortgage. You have to own both. Yeah. It's not either or. If you own only one, the up there is no obligation, it is null and void. This is a Supreme um, Court case ruling. Damn, that's a weird game right there. Y'all can go look it up. Supreme Court case ruling. The mortgage must travel with the note. Go ahead. Wow, that's a weird game right there. No, auto loans. We got a lot of luxury cars here, yeah, right? There. All right, I'm going to give y'all some other game now. How to delete auto loans from your credit. Closed or open, it doesn't matter. Right. You can delete any account that you want off your consumer report. Right. Damn. So I, I know a lot of y'all will dispute and then you'll hear, all right, you know, the bank said, oh, we have to report this by law. What law? What law? I challenge any banker, any firm, any consumer reporting agency, show me the law that says you have to report anything to a person's consumer report. There is no law. The law says you may report and the consumer must give permission. So there's a law. It's called the Graham Leach Bailey Act, right? Yeah. 15 USC 6802, right? But before I go to 6802, I want to go to 6801, right? right. I'm going to go to 6802. I'm going to give you all the card game in a minute. Well, because I'm going to pass 6801, I'm going to give y'all some student loan game right now. Just, just a little bit of student loan game. Yeah. All right. Protection of non-public personal information, right? Student loans are not public information. It's not. Right. That's private information, right? And the law says that it is the policy of the Congress that each financial institution, those that extended those lines of credit to you, those student loans, they have an affirmative and continuing obligation to respect the privacy of its customers and to protect the security and confidentiality of those customers' non-public personal information. Well, if Congress says this, the first thing I want to know is what does privacy mean? Protection from, protection from people. Correct. What does confidentiality mean? Yeah. It's not something that you can just share with everyone. Right. So if, if these institutions are supposed to protect my privacy and confidentiality of my non-public information, where does a student loan servicer that you don't even have a contract with, there is no contract. Because you might have gotten the uh, alleged loan from like a Sally May Department of Education or one of these government agencies, but... Where did Nailnet come from? Who, who is that? All right. How are you reporting as a creditor when there is no contractual obligation between me and Nailnet? Wow, yeah. But Furthermore, the law also says this. Your information must be protected against breaches. Well, these companies share your information with Experian. Well, didn't Experian have a, a data breach? That's a violation of this law. Wow. That's, that's money you can potentially get if you decide to go and sue them. 
Well, let me let me let me take it a little bit, a little bit, one more step further. Sixty-eight oh two. I told y'all y'all can delete anything, right? Now I'm going to prove it. Fifteen U.S.C. sixty-eight oh two. Obligations with respect to disclosures of personal information. Bro, these are law. I'm Jamaican. I wasn't even born here. I came here thirteen years ago. These laws were here before I got off the plane. Right. I'm just a messenger, but I'm telling you guys, when I learned this stuff, everything changed. Wow. The whole credit game changed. I didn't need to study regular credit. Regular credit to me now is trash. Yeah. Why? Because I can do whatever I want with the laws. It is written. And exactly. their laws, their laws says, brother, it says, 15 U.S.C. 6802B, opt out a financial institution may not may not it's a choice they don't have to report anything it is a choice there is no law that says they have to report anything it is a lie damn it goes back to double speaking a financial institution may not disclose non-public personal information to a non-affiliated third party unless so let's break that part down. A non-affiliated third party. So if you own company A, right? And company A has a subsidiary, company B, they are affiliated by common interest and ownership. But now if there's a company C that you don't own. So I like to use Truist and Lightstream. They're affiliated by common ownership. TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian Truist has nothing to do with them. They don't own those companies. That's a non-affiliated third party. So Truist can share information between Lightstream and Truist Bank, right? But when it comes to TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian, the consumer must get three disclosures before that information can be exchanged. And the consumer must agree to it. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, that's deep. So now, this is what the law says. A financial institution may not disclose non-public personal information to a non-affiliated third party unless A. Such financial institution clearly and conspicuously discloses to the consumer in writing or in electronic form or other form permitted by the regulator regulations prescribed under Section 6804 of this title that such information may be disclosed to such third party. This is double language. All this is simply saying that, okay, we're going to report, Doreen, we're going to report your information. That's all that is saying. But you see how much stuff is in there just to say that? Right. That's the first thing. This is what 95% of all consumers get, the first disclosures. The first disclosure, which is A, they don't get B and they don't get C. But you cannot give A without giving B and C. And B says... The consumer is given the opportunity, right, before the time that such information is initially disclosed to direct that such information not be disclosed to such third party. So what B is saying is that, okay, Doreen, we're going to report your information. But before we report your information, we're going to tell you that we're going to report your information. And if you decide that you don't want this information reported, this is where you sign. Wow. And then C now says this. The consumer is given an explanation of how the consumer can exercise that non-disclosure option. So if I decide not to have my information reported, they no need to tell me what I need to do so my information does not get reported. Damn. That's hard, bro. That's a real game. I ain't gonna lie. Consumer controls the credit report. The consumer controls the consumer report, you control the information, but people don't know they have this type of power and they yeah. get taken advantage of. For sure, for sure. That's real deep, I can't lie. That's the sauce, man. They been to be like, wow, because I'm shocked, I can't lie. So look, as far as um, credit building, mm -hmm. talk about some credit building. Um, I usually teach a lot about, you know, trade lines and mm -hmm. stuff like that, you know, which is trash. Um, but you know, what really matters in today's world is primaries. How do you feel about primaries? Primaries are essential. 
without primaries, you're going to have a thin profile because all you're going to have is authorized users. Exactly. So people that be hitting me up, they be like, they trade lines, trade lines, trade lines. Mm -hmm. And I'm always saying primaries, primaries, primaries. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, they think that these trade lines can do so much. Trade lines is really temporary. It's marketing. You know what I mean? It's help it. people as market trade line as the holy grail of credit. Exactly. Exactly. It's like how they've marketed credit bureaus. Exactly. Credit bureaus are fake. Trade lines can assist. It's a crutch. But yeah. people think that they can replace bad credit habits by throwing on a, 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 a trade, trade line. line. You no. can't put lipstick on pig. It's still a pig. Exactly. Like, right. you got to clean the stuff up. Exactly. The business credit. How you feel about that? Business credit is lit. So I know a little bit about business credit because it's not my area of speciality. I have friends that does the business credit side of it. But what people need to comprehend is that business credit is the holy grail of credit. Yeah. It does not report to your personal yeah. unless you PG it. Exactly. And, and the thing about business credit is you can run up a bag because the factors, yeah. the factors of your personal credit is not the factors of business credit. Exactly. So when you can max out on a business credit card, it doesn't get reported. Yeah. Right? Yeah. When, when you can get a, a hundred or two hundred thousand dollar line of credit on the business side, that doesn't affect you personally. What happens and what I've seen, I'm not going to say it's everybody, people that are not financially educated, that they're not tuning in to this episode on the channel right now. Right. Right. They, they've never seen a hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand before. They've never seen a credit card with 50 bands on it. So now they're going to shop in spree. Well, who's going to pay for that? You use it, somebody got to pay for it. Who's going to pay for it? Right. But then you didn't create an asset. If you went and bought a luxury car, is the car being rented and providing you income? Right. Are we turning liabilities into assets? assets. Yep. But they just go on a splurge and spree. Oh, I'm going to go live my best life. I'm going to go to Mali. I'm, I'm going to go to Dubai. I'm going to go everywhere. But damn, now this credit card is maxed out. You didn't generate a stream of income to pay this card back. Right. Now you're stuck. And now you look stupid because you're going to say, no, you know, I, I took this program and I got the card. But no, you're coming to me. You're saying the rain, you know, I, I got a $50,000 credit card and I need it deleted. Well, what did you use that $50,000 line of credit to do? That thing. Credit isn't the issue. It's people's mind. Yeah. Yep. My people are destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. So if that is true. And it is designed this way because remember, there's the finance charge, they can write it off, and then they can send it to collection. They're getting paid. They will extend these line of credit to you because now, all right, they can start garnishing people's wages. Wow. Because now, if, if let's say they send it to a debt collector, right? Yeah. And the debt collector got a judgment and you get summoned to court. You didn't go. They get a default judgment and then they put in for garnishment, right? And then it got approved. Now your whole nine to five paycheck is being garnished by debt collectors. But guess what? People don't know that they don't have to pay debt collectors. This is in the law. Uh oh, so you don't have to pay a debt collector. You don't have to, it's in the law. I'm not saying y'all shouldn't. You gotta do that. Listen, I only got a high school diploma. I'm quite sure some of y'all got PhDs and bachelors, but I am telling you, the law says, 15 U.S.C. 1692 C.C. In writing, a consumer can refuse to pay a debt collector. Right. I didn't make it up, bro. It's in your laws. Wow. And y'all can go look it up yourself. Wow. That's, that's deep, y'all. You feel me? So, like, it's, it's, it's if I'm a person and I'm loving the information, right? Mm -hmm. How do I go and, like, get in tune with you? Like, as far as, like, you know, what do you offer your services? All right. So, my university... I, I have two calls per week, eight calls a month, where we go anywhere from three to four hours. I tell you, bro, I don't run out of game. And this is just the surface, right? Where I have my students, we come on, we do credit Q&As, where I'm breaking the laws down, we're building dispute letter. Dude, I've built over 50 dispute that are off the dome. Right. right now, I can build a dispute letter right on here. Like, So if we want to learn how to clean our credit, you know, and we want to learn how to clean other people's credit, we just got to sign up for your program. Correct. And you're going to teach us that and that's we're going to be able to get on the phone with that's, you? That's what I do. Well, you won't be able to get on the phone with me. Okay. And I'm being full transparent, guys. I run a seven-figure company. Right. Right. You're going to get on with my team. 
But you get on the team that first week, you're going to be on a call with me in a Zoom. Okay. I'm being transparent. I'm telling y'all, the Zoom is busting. I'm breaking everything down. And even I got to get on one of those Zooms with you. Bro, come on. It's too easy. I just shoot you a Zoom link. Yeah. I'm, I'm breaking everything down. We dissect the whole law. And what's been so effective is the type of dispute letters. You cannot find my dispute letters anywhere on the internet because, I, dude, I make them off the top of the dome. Yeah, you know what you're talking about, too. Right? So, so what I did was, about two weeks ago, I made um, an ebook. I basically outlined the whole process of how I built the five, oh, I had a 504 FICO, and I took it to a 10 three times. So in that ebook, I'm breaking down the whole steps of what I did when I was deployed. I even have the pictures in there. I read 140 books, bro. Like, people are thinking that, wow. you know, the rain just overnight. It's not overnight. It's not. People fail to realize that if you want to become the best at something, it's going to take time and hard work to get it. It's either it's going to cost you, it's going to cost you time or you're going to pay someone to learn yeah. it. No, for sure. And a lot of times people are cheap and they know the price of everything and the value of nothing. So then they are stuck with bad credit and they wonder why they live in such an expensive life. For sure. So sure. the ebook on my website is $197. But for this episode, I'll give it to them for $47. And even though it's $47, for every 10 people that's watching this, probably only three will get it. And it's okay, because guess what? If you want to live an expensive life, that is your problem. But I'm here to tell you, the information is here. And the, oh, I never knew and nobody taught me, they didn't taught me in school. That's an excuse. That's a crutch for you not to take action. Right. All they got to do is text the word FICO F-I-C-O to 917-993-5238. That's it. Text the word FICO to 917-993-5238 and get the ebook. It's only $47. Yeah, People be using $47 to buy stupid stuff. For sure. Go educate yourself. The last two years, I've spent over 500000 on personal development, branding, and education. Yeah, that's smart. That's smart. This isn't a money grab company. I am here to stay. No, I feel like anybody that's teaching somebody how to do these things is definitely an asset. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people don't know, and they can actually take your information and create their own business. That's what I teach. That's the best thing. That's oh. Man, what's better than that? Oh, what's better than learning how to... Because, like, okay, you know how many people that they're surrounded by that they can just teach or just fix their credit. Fix their credit. You know what I mean? Like, okay, I'm going to just fix all of my friends' credit and charge them. You don't have to charge thousands of dollars. You can just start off charging them some small. It's like working a job. Mm -hmm. So that's, I feel like that's an asset in itself, bro. But remember right now, the way we think now, people are still trapped in the matrix. Yes. So a lot of people are going to hear what we're saying right now. You know, Kevo, it's cool. The rain is cool. But I don't believe it's possible for me. Yes, it is. All you got to do is get the book. It's $47. Read the book. Thinking is the hardest thing most people never do. And if you want to hide something from someone, put it in a book. But guess what? What, do, what does books have? People's years of experience in a book. They do. My people they are destroyed because of a lack of information. The more you read, the more you learn, the more you earn. We got to get educated. We cannot keep saying nobody taught me it. Like, when, when do you become responsible? When do I take accountability for my own education? It's so easy to... Oh, I'm going to blame Kevo. I'm going to blame the rain. I'm going to go blame society. Bro, blame yourself. Yeah. For not working hard. Yeah. Not getting the right information, you know. I, I get it. I understand because I deal with a lot of people. But also, I mean, a lot of people will just listen. They get excited, but they don't take action. And life is all about taking action, taking a risk, just trying it. It don't hurt. You know what I mean? So that is cool. Though. I'm going to put, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all your information, like your number, mm -hmm. your, your uh, YouTube going to be in a link so that they can all go to your channel. And like I said, I want to be able to help, help people. You know what I mean? And I feel like what you're doing is helping. That's why I was like, man, let me get bro on the show. Cause it's like, I like what you're doing, bro. You feel me? And like you going crazy with the credit. Like I ain't never really seen a lot of people that know the law. Like, you know it, bro. You know, I that's did. It. That's big. So we didn't even touch repo. Oh my. God. That's very important, too. Oh my. We got to hit him with the repo. Yo, so, all right. <laughs> repo. I didn't even touch bankruptcy. There's so many things. I like, guys, I wish I could give you all, all this stuff. And there's right. people that got bankruptcy, too. You know what? The, 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 the double language around bankruptcy is, or the double speaking around bankruptcy is, it has to stay on your credit for 10 years. Lies. Yeah, lies. I always heard that. 
lies, lies, lies. It is in the law that it could report up to 10 years. But when we take into account, how did this bankruptcy get on the credit in the first place? The first thing is the courts don't report. So if the courts don't report your information, where is the information coming from? There's secondary consumer putting agency. The big ones, we know Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian. But we got smaller ones, SageStream, ARS, Innovis, LexisNexis, MIB. Um, we, we got a whole lot of small ones that go data diving. And they go to these, these, these sources and they pull information. Well, when you write the clerk of the court and you ask them if they report to any consumer reporting agency, they're going to tell you no. How I know? Because I've done it. I've written them before. Right? So we're talking now about an entity that went to fish for your information, quote unquote, public information, right? But is it really public information or is it identity theft? Wow. All right, let me break it down. Oh, I'm giving you all the sauce today. All right, let me break it down. The first thing the law says is this, right? 15 U.S.C. 1681b2, right? Permissible purpose. A lot of people don't know that the law for permissible purpose just got updated a few months ago. There is a new law for permissible purpose, and it addresses the way consumer reported agencies give out and share information or who has access to your information. Right. See, before they used to give a disclosure. The law says the disclosure doesn't work anymore. They must have one permission, written consent from the consumer, and they must have a legitimate business reason. Without those two factors, or if they're government or court, or if they got um, an order for it, they can pull it. But without those, they cannot pull the consumer report. And this is what it says. In general, subject to subsection C, any consumer reporting agency may furnish. The law says it again. They may hey. furnish. They don't have to furnish. They may, may furnish, right? They may furnish a consumer report under the following circumstances right. and no other, right? And two says, in accordance with the written instructions of the consumer to whom it relates. So if we know that a consumer reporting agency cannot share information without written permission, so hmm, how did LexisNexis or SageStream get my public information? And then when they got it, who gave them permission to share it with another consumer reporting agency? Hell. The law says written permission has to be given, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see what the law says about identity theft. <laughs> the law says 15 U.S.C. 1681Q, right? Yes. It says obtaining information under false pretenses, right? Yeah. I'm telling you guys, when I tell you that we can get anything deleted, guys, I'm not just making this stuff up. You can follow it yourself. Yeah. They say this. Any person, what do we know about the word person? We know that a person means a corporation, right? Yeah. We know that Experian, TransUnion, Equifax, they're all corporations. Any corporation who knowingly and willfully obtains information on a consumer from a consumer reporting agency under false pretenses shall be fined under Title 18. A consumer reporting agency obtaining information from another consumer reporting agency under false pretenses they can be fined. Let's go to Title 18. So now we're going to go to 18 U.S.C. 1028A. And this speaks about aggravated identity theft. In general, whoever during and in relation to any felony enumerated in subsection C knowingly transfers, possesses, or uses without lawful authority a means of identification of another person shall in addition to the punishment provided for such felony, be sentenced to a term of imprisonment of two years. Damn. So when they report your alleged bankruptcy, who gave them permission? Who used or transferred your information? The law says, I want to use the word, who knowingly possessed, right. uses, or transferred without lawful authority a means of identification of you. How did they know that information belonged to you? 
how did they identify you? It means they have your information. And if someone uses your information without your permission or lawful authority, it is identity theft. This is law. Hell. Yeah, you know, you know some stuff, bro. You want to make me sign up at a class. <laughs> but so, hey, it's lit, man. I wanted to ask you another thing um, about the, how you think, what you feel about the secure credit cards and credit loans? Perfect. Those are gems because if you're, like I said, I wasn't born here, right? I didn't get the opportunity to have a mom or a dad put me on as an authorized user, build that relationship. So when I started, I had to get those. Yeah. I got a secured credit card, yeah. right? I got my $300 limit and I had gotten a $500 um, a secured loan. Yeah. But then I graduated to unsecure. And then no, by me demonstrating use, payback, use, payback, I was able to obtain more lines of credit. So if someone is sitting down on $1,000 or two or $3,000, I would go open up at least three $500 secured or pledge loans, right? and then maybe two um, secured credit cards. That's five primaries you just got. Exactly. If y'all want to know, that's exactly how you get primaries, the secure way. That's smart. Right? Smart. Th there's other things you can use. Um, some of these- Yeah, some of the apps. Yeah, some of the apps. You ever heard of Experian Boost? Yeah, Experian Boost. Oh my God. That is the worst thing a consumer could ever do. Remember, when a consumer goes to validate a debt, oftentimes it's inaccurate information, right? Right. Well, if you're the one who put the Netflix, who put the utility and all of this on there, and then it goes to collection, how are you going to dispute that on the inaccurate information when you're the one who validated it by providing the information in the first place? It is a trap. Wow. It's all game. Okay. I'm going to give you five points, right? I'm going to boost you up five points, but I'm going to take all the information and you're going to validate the account by inputting the information yourself. Exactly. Come on. They are masters of deception. Wow, that's crazy. But that was a real I'm going to get five right points. You know, let me sign that's up. A good game. It's a, it's, a, it's a scam, guys. It's, it's a trap for, for later on because they know y'all are... There's 330 million people in America. 165 million people live paycheck to paycheck. Of those 60%, if you're living paycheck to paycheck, it means if you got credit cards, car loans, those stuff are late. Some of those accounts are in collections. You have bad credit. And these are the same people that they're targeting to put and verify those information on your report. You see, every time your report gets pulled, from a consumer put in agencies, they get paid. Uh, so if every time they get paid for the information being pulled, if you got bad credit, the average person that gets denied applies five more times before they give up. I know because it happened to me. I'm in shock. I don't want to believe it. Let me apply to five more banks. Everybody that I applied to, they paid to get the report pulled. They are making bad credit is the biggest business in America. It all goes back to people having bad credit. If that was the case, why is it so difficult for you to correct inaccurate information on your credit, on your consumer report? Because bad credit makes the most money. It's a big business. That was a crazy game, bro. I can't lie to you. Sorry. Three point seven billion. Wells Fargo. They gotta pay. But what people don't comprehend is that they made so much more. Three point seven billion was nothing, right? Bank of America, two hundred and fifty million. They got fined for illegal fees, late payment fees, um, low account fees, and overdraft fees. They didn't go to jail. And didn't go to jail. But I read a news report about a couple, a couple that one of these banks, I don't remember which bank, transferred, well, I'm not sure if you heard about it, about 100000 in their account, and they used it, right? They used about like 40 something thousand, and now they can't pay it back they're going to go to jail. The banks can fraud consumers for billions. And they all they got to do is pay a fine. Damn, that, yeah, that's, that should show people right there. Y'all can go look it up. This is, America is not run by a president. It is run by the banking system. The, if I control the world's money, I care not what its leaders do. That's rough, child. People think the Federal Reserve Bank is a bank. They think it's federal. There's nothing federal about it, and it's not a bank. 
double speaking. They have the population believe they are a bank. It's a lot of game out here. Yeah. And people, because they don't read, they don't know. Right. So the biggest, one of the other biggest business is ignorance. Because if, if, if I can take a, a, a group of people, erase their history, program them to go to school, get a job, join the 40-40-40 club, 40 hours a week, 40 years on 40% 40 of your pension to, to get a house now with a mortgage, right? That, that now got securitized and then they got sold on the secondary market. And now the person you are paying these mortgage to don't possess the note and the mortgage together, but you're still paying them, not knowing that the obligation to pay was gone when it got securitized and they do not hold both of them. Bro, it's such a big business. It's, it's ridiculous. The more I learn, the more my eyes are opened up. It, it's, it's a whole rabbit hole. Yeah. And it, it'll, it'll make you mad just knowing like what, like it'll make you angry just knowing what they're doing kind of like almost. Cause it's like what you thought, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then what you end up seeing later kind of like, oh my God, I thought this, but it's really like this. But this is how economy, economics and an economy is created. If everybody is rich, there is no economy. You gotta, got, you have gotta have poor people. You're right, you're and right. if we tell lie vision, if we tell them lies through their vision and control them remotely, we can get them to do whatever we want. That's why it don't work for people like you. You are not a consumer. You educate yourself. You join mastermind. You are a business owner. You're an entrepreneur. Yeah. You don't fit the business model. Right. I pay for mentorship. That's why I was going to ask you, what do you charge for mentorship? So there's two types. The university right now is only $5,000, right? right? It's only $5,000 to join my university. And then I have a white label program where I white label my whole business. That's for $7,500. And, I, and I, you just have it. But if you want me to teach you how to run that business the way I'm running mine now, that now is only 25000 I think that 25000 is worth it. If somebody's trying to be just like you and you teach them, it's worth it. I can't lie. So we're talking about systems, SOPs, frameworks. They're getting websites, funnels, um, text number. I'm, I'm building out the whole system for them. All they got to do is learn how to market, and I teach them how to market and how to do what I do. Wow. So how do they reach you on, like, what all, what's your, like, TikToks and stuff like that? Like, I want you to break it all the way down to all your social media and everything. Like, so my social media, it's simple. Doreen De Levante, right? Yeah. D-A-R-A-I-N-E-D-E-L-E-V-A-N-T-E -E 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 on all platforms. YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. My YouTube is wild. It is, my, my free content is better than a lot of people's paid courses. Right, right. This is crazy right here. I can't lie. <laughs> I know this is going to go up because if, if, if they smart and they listen to what you said, they should be able to say like, man, that's crazy. Credit bureaus don't exist. It's one of the biggest scams ever invented. Credit wow. bureaus. That's nuts. So you got a website too? Yeah, DorenDelevante.com. Okay, okay. They can go on there. Um, like I said before, the FICO ebook, mad games and dispute letters in there, right? So all they got to do is just text the word FICO, F-I-C-O, to 917-993-5238. And for anybody that wants to join the university, all you got to do is text the word university to 917-993-5238. Let's get plugged in. I'm going to tell you, I'm, I don't believe in holding information back. Right. Because Myron Golden, I'm not sure if you know him, but Myron is my mentor. And Myron says, Doreen, if you can't give your best for free, you don't know enough. Exactly. And that, that when he said that to me, that hit, because I know a lot of people that don't live up to what they say or they can't prove what sure. they say. Sure. And a conversation like this, not a lot of people can have the conversation. No, for sure. That's deep. So like, like y'all know, man, I'm going to put all the bro information in the description, everything, man. I just hope y'all smart enough to go actually sign up. And man, we just, y'all keep see this study happening. You know what I mean? Like, and I want bro to be able to, just put the world on with this. I ain't gonna lie, this is deep, bro. Shit, <laughs> man, I'm telling you the game. So, we gonna wrap it up, though. You know, you dig? We'll see y'all next time.